Hey y'all, I want to talk about a subject that you guys don't really hear me talk about a lot because I've never experienced this, but um, let's talk about C-sections. And I had the opportunity last night to go to our local county birth network meeting. And we have one of the largest birth networks in the state and in the country. And it's such a privilege to get to go and learn really anything I can get my hands on. I just love learning about it. So last night's topic was C-sections and special circumstances, um, VBACs, twins, breech, birth, etc. And there was um, an obstetrician, gynecologist there, uh, OBGYN, and he is he is so amazing to hear speak. Um, he truly believes in the in the birth process. He one of his quotes was um, one of his quotes was um, a hundred years ago. Women stopped talking to women about their births, and we began trusting people who weren't even involved in the process on how we should birth our babies. And that's where things started to go wrong. Um, before modern technology, um, which thankfully was a step in the right direction in most cases, um, before that all happened, you, you would hear about birth from your mom, your sister, your aunt, your cousin, your grandmother, and it was a time where women would come together and support one another in the process. And that all got lost. Somewhere in the modern technology world it got lost. And he really believes that uh, birth is that simple. And he absolutely believes in C-sections and believes that they are necessary, which I, I agree with him. Um, he gave some examples of Actually, he gave um, two examples of a necessary C-section. He said, literally, if the mother and baby are about to die, like, not just one or two D-cells or you've been stuck at five centimeters for six hours or example, fill in the blank. Um, he, he said, literally, the mom and baby are about to die or uh, if the baby is in a transverse position which means the baby is laying straight across the cervix like this. So head over here and feet over here or vice versa, head, foot. Um, a baby cannot, literally it just can't come out like that. Um, now he, he absolutely waits until absolutely necessary to perform a C-section. Um, he is one of our most trusted obstetricians he will actually allow VBACs. He he doesn't let you try. He allows them. Period. He he is so amazing and supportive. He one of the best things he said all night was, you know, don't come in here for your second birth or your third birth worried about your last birth. That was before that happened. This is a new birth. This is a new experience. And that was pretty powerful to me. Um, he has a 92% success rate for VBACs. Um, he has delivered twins after cesarean. He has delivered breach after cesarean. He said you'd be surprised how many times women come in having had a previous cesarean and they deliver a child larger than their last. Um, he told us about a lady who had severe scoliosis and fused discs in her back and her pelvis was like out of alignment and she still gave birth vaginally. He said, you just have to come in here and you have to realize that birth takes time. It's not on a clock. There's no limit. Um, birth takes time. And he said, the three main things that you know are going to make you successful in this is number one that you eat right number two you get enough sleep and number three that you exercise and stay fit 
and he said, running around with your older kids does not count. <laughs> he said, that is not endurance, that is not exercise. Yeah, he said that those three things are the main things that he looks for, um, and he knows right off if you're going to be successful or not. Um, he said if you hold on to your previous birth trauma, you, you'll have another C-section. He said, I guarantee you, I'll have to cut you open because you won't be able to get past mentally what happened to you last time. And you've got to be willing to overcome that. He said, uh, C-sections happen for three reasons. Uh, they're the doctor's choice, the mother's choice, or the father's choice. Um, it was a little bit hard for me to wrap my head around the father's choice, but... Um, I just, because I, I, my opinion is it's m my uterus and nobody's going to tell me what to do with it. I don't care if my husband can't handle it or he thinks that I, you know, need some help. Um, but if I ever had a C-section because my husband had a moment of panic, I, I would stab his eye? I don't know. I, I would never, like, that's not okay in my eyes. However, I live in a very conservative state, a very conservative county. Not so much very conservative county, but there are people here who are very conservative. And so I, I, can, res I can respect their opinions about it. And his words were, um, if a man comes at me and tells me that his wife needs a C-section right now because we are done... He said, I'm not going to tell another man what to do with his wife. Uh, and that is, of course, um, more traditional religious views, um, submission, things like that. And, and that's, I understand that there are families that still practice that lifestyle. Um, let's see. He gave some very helpful tips for if you are having a VBAC and you are in the market for a care provider, this time you're pregnant and you are in the market for a care provider, you need to find a doctor who will talk to you about you and your body and your baby. Not you, not listen to them talk to you about you compared to everyone else. And every woman is different. Every situation is different. You need a doctor who will accompany you on your journey, not dictate your journey. And this just goes for any care provider. Um, not all midwives are even created equal. When you are choosing a care provider, you need to pick someone who will go with you, not someone who will tell you how it has to be done before they even know anything. Uh, no one should control how you have your baby. Um, yeah, that was just his words. <laughs> um, he said, uh, birth takes endurance, time, and patience. Uh, he said, make sure you have a doula. Somebody who will be with you and able to support you through not even just four hours, six hours, eight hours through 24, 36, 40 hours if necessary um, because doulas are specifically trained to endure and comfort and be there and support um, a mom in labor and it's not to take the place of the father by any means. It um, Husbands, unless they have taken the doula certification um, we are human, you know, and even as just a friend, I'm human and a family member and our husbands are human and our partners and, um, they get tired and you get tired of seeing someone you love, um, really work through something difficult, uh, especially if it's been a difficult road, different, a difficult labor. And, um, you need someone who's not going to get tired and bail on you. Um, and not in a bad way, but I, I mean that in a way that um, just emotionally 
because you are even going to bail on yourself. You're going to get tired. You're going to get wore down. You're going to break down. And you need someone to look you in the eye and grab your hands tight and say, look at me. You can do this. And you're almost done. Um, one of the best quotes he said last night was, don't let your birth experience be stolen because you were afraid. Um, a lot of times... I can I hear women talking about VBACs and they are nervous and I understand that rightfully so. Um, I can imagine. Let me rephrase that. I I don't understand. I've never had one, but I can try to imagine how nervous and scared or why they may be. I I, I don't know like to the level that they'd be nervous and scared, but I can under I can appreciate how they would be nervous and scared. And um, he said, you know, you just have to go in and if it's what you want to do, you have to believe in yourself. You can't just try again. You have to really know that's what you're here for and just because your baby came out, just because one baby came out one way doesn't mean any baby has to come out a certain way, um, if that makes sense. Um, he said, find the person who will do what you need to be done for you to have your baby. And he was amazing. He told us a little bit about his journey and his residency. And um, he told us about how when he was working at the county hospital across town that he... Um, he performed his first VBAC and he was a second year med student and he just kind of did it on the fly. He said, I sure didn't tell my third year um, student and I definitely didn't tell my fourth year and I sure as heck didn't tell my attending. And he said, but there was no reason to believe that this woman couldn't have her baby just because she had a C-section the first time. And he said, um, he said, you know, I, I got brought to the red carpet the next day by, you know, my boss. And he said, and he made me present it to the medical board the next week. And he, he went on to say how scared he was. And because um, he just knew he was going to get grilled. He said, I know that they don't believe in this. And um, anyway, he said a guy by the name of Jack Pritchard ended up... Um, saving the grilling because he was also on the medical board and while he was presenting his case you know they were asking him questions like you know did you check her cervix um did you actually think that baby could come out that way um and so he was answering you know yes sir yes sir answering the questions and the guy jack pritchard stood up and he um was one of the i think he's one of the authors of williams obstetrics it's a book but uh he said um, Jack Pritchard stood up and said, Dr. Cummings, do you think you did the right thing for your patient? And he said, yes, sir. And he said, all right, let's move on. Next case. So he, at that point, realized that there were other people out there like him um, who were willing to do the right things for your patients than, um, than you've done what you're supposed to do. So... He also said that if you are noticing that when you go to your appointments, your doctor is talking to you, but you're not talking to them. Uh, for example, he said, uh, did your doctor, did you talk to your doctor or did you listen while they talked? He said, that's a red flag. You should be able to find a care provider who doesn't come in with anything to say other than what you ask. Um, they work for you. So... Um, he said, common deterrence of being able to have a successful vaginal birth after C-section. He said, it's usually care providers. Uh, everybody has a comfort level. And he said, um, he said I, I admire doctors. I am one. He said, I, we are very well trained and very well educated. And he said, we are also well educated in the way that the insurance system works. And we understand very much so that we will be sued if anything happens uh, to your precious baby. He said a lot of times, just for the sake of the doctor's peace of mind, they will go ahead and 
perform a C-section because it's 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 guaranteed, you know, a higher likelihood of guarantee that nothing's going to happen to you and you're not going to sue them at the end of the day. Um, he gave a statistic last night and he said the uh, the chance of I don't remember what exactly uh, circumstance the the statistic came from, uh, but it was a, a rupture. Uh, circumstance and uh, situation and he said there's 2.5 percent chance that your uterus will rupture um, if you want to have a VBAC, a primary VBAC and he said that's 97.5 percent chance that it's gonna be fine um, he has delivered a vaginal birth after five cesareans uh, vaginal multiple deliveries after four cesareans, three, um, and several. I mean, at, at five is the highest number he gave us, though. So, um, he's delivered twins vaginally, breaches vaginally. He just really, it was just really comforting to see somebody who respected the process, uh, respected a woman, uh, respected a woman's body, um, and just really, it was nice to hear that not all doctors are created equal. And in our area, in our county, I realized that um, there are several places that if you lived in my town, I could suggest to you if you wanted to give birth in a hospital, that would be a, a mother-friendly place, mother and baby friendly place to give birth. But I also understand that it's not that way in the a lot of the country. So... Um, you know, he said some common determinants are care providers, um, the support people, they tire out, uh, husbands, nurses, they get tired, um, it's just human, it's just human, and, and it's easier for us to tire out, I say us, I'm, it's easier for the support people to tire out because it's not our birth, we're not the ones having the baby, so, um, it's it's why it's more common so with all that said um i definitely am not going to tell anyone what to do with their birth with their uterus with anything um i can appreciate the fact that someone may be nervous to attempt it um especially if they did everything you know in their power to have a vaginal birth the first time um, but I definitely just want anybody who's watching this video who's had a previous cesarean whether you've had one or two three um, that it is possible to have um, a vaginal birth after cesarean um, I am aware that there may not be a care provider near you that is able to provide you that so it may not be possible to you based on your circumstances and where you live and who's available to care for you but it is possible um people have done it so I, I mean i can assure you that it is possible uh, however some tips for if you are looking for a great care provider and you do have a special circumstance like twins or a breech baby or you're a VBAC you should definitely, absolutely, 100% have a doula who believes in you and believes in the care. Second of all, you should absolutely trust in yourself and your ability to birth your baby. Uh, and number three, you should find a care provider who's willing to work for you and with you to do what you need them to do to help you get your babies out in the most safe and effective way um, that you need. And that is pretty much all my rambling. Um, it was a great meeting. He is like the anime of midwifery. He's the obstetrics version, which is just awesome because I just hope that... I know that there's several, several doctors in our area already who know of him and, and understand and can appreciate and are more comfortable 
uh, with his practices. Um, so they're more willing to be comfortable and trust in themselves to help women trust in themselves as well. Um, so anyway, I'll hush and quit rambling and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.